afternoon, everybody. Um, so we're just past 12 o'clock, so I'm allowed to say lunchtime. Um, but you've still got another couple of hours before lunch, I think. So um, I'm going to talk about CBDCs. Um, so I'm sure everybody's now heard about CBDCs. Probably about two years ago, not many people did. So um, let me talk to you about what, what they mean for innovation, because it's very important. OK, so very quickly. I'm Anthony Welfare, I'm Senior Advisor for CBDCs at Ripple. Um, I've been around the blockchain space for enterprise blockchain for about seven years, um, and I've written a book on it as well. So if you want to learn lots about commercializing blockchain, have a look at good bookshops. Um, James mentioned Ripple yesterday, so James, our VP for CBDCs. Uh, Ripple's about 750 people. Um, we're growing massively, which means I never update the slides, so we grew by about three, four hundred people last year. Um, we're cross-border, known for our cross-border payments, but we also do lots of other um, sort of projects using XRP Ledger and other sort of technologies. One of those is CBDCs, um, and we've been on, working on CBDCs for around about three years now. Okay, so... The previous speaker, or a couple of, a couple of speakers ago, talked about the history. Um, and it was, it's quite apt, it's quite important to talk about where we came from to where we're going. I'm not going to talk about the history, it's, it's very clear. Um, but we're at the sort of digital currency end. And we talk about digital currencies, and we, we look at a mix of digital currencies for now and the future. What you have today, we class as electronic money. So if you think about the money that's in your bank account on your app, that technically is not a digital currency, it's not a token. Um, so that's the difference that we're talking about here. And it does enable a lot of different things. As we all know with crypto, you can do so many different things with Bitcoin, XRP, Ethereum. A CBDC is issued by a central bank. Okay, so it's the same as the dollar or the euro in your pocket. It's, it's issued by the central bank and it's to use and, you know, in, in whichever country you are, etc. In the middle, we have this mix. Um, SCBDC is sort of synthetic CBDC, which is, um, you know, like a, a CBDC that could be issued by a central bank, uh, sorry, commercial bank as part of the banking system. This bit in the middle is work in progress. Um, I used to have a slide with loads of different sort of explanations of stable coins and different types of stable coins, and literally, I'm sure it'd be 20 slides, and there's lots of different words and meanings. What we look at is, is sort of stable coins in the middle. To the right-hand side, as you're looking at it, we would class them as regulated stable coins, okay? So we know there's no regulation really yet, but it should be coming, hopefully. A regulated stable coin, we would say, is backed by a bank which has $1 for every token issued as such. So we see that as a regulated stable coin and very similar to a CBDC really. It's one, you know, one euro if, of a token is one euro in a bank vault, etc., or with some sort of collateral. The other side of stable coins are the ones we have today. Um, so USDT, USDC, all those sort of stable coins that are issued today on different blockchains and on public ledgers. And then obviously on the left-hand side, as you're looking at the, the slides, we have cryptocurrencies. We still believe they will exist in the future. You know, we're not looking at this where CBDCs will be the only thing and cryptos will be nothing and vice versa. That mix, that scale could be anything. You know, so at the moment, it's something like 97%, 90% of the money that we have in our wallets um, is actually commercial bank money. So it's near the right-hand side. That probably will stay similar for some countries, but change. So it could be a world of 20, 30, 50% cryptocurrency, 1% CBDC, or vice versa, or any sort of mix on that. So we need to be ready for a world of interoperability and sort of bringing this all together. What do you need for a successful CBDC? James mentioned this yesterday very quickly, so I'll talk. A regulatory framework. There's been so much discussion over the last few days. We need the regulation and we need it to come out. We need it to be fair and reasonable and plenty of discussion about that. We need the technology enablers. So we have the technology, but we still need to work on how to make it better, quicker, and easier to use for us as humans. The most important point for me is that I can use this, this currency as well as my gran, who's 99, or my mum. We should all be able to use it the same. 
And then finally, most importantly, is benefits. There's no point building a CBDC or a regulated stablecoin for the fun of it. Like, there's just no point. Build it for benefits. And let's talk about a few. Um, this is my favorite chart because there's too many words on it, but I wanted to put, us, put some information up there. On the left-hand side, what we've just got the high level, what are the differences to traditional money, to the, to the money that we use today in the system? So it's direct access, it's, you can send it P2P. So CBDC, I can send from me to anybody straight away. I don't need a bank, I don't need anyone else. Programmable money, you can program the movement, so I could do recurring payments, for example. Um, programmable um, sort of, uh, sorry. Programmable payments, so you can make it pay and do different things, split payments and do things like, you know, whatever you need in terms of smart contracts, programmability. Transparency, really important. Everything that's on a blockchain is trusted and trackable, okay? It doesn't mean everybody has to see everything. Yesterday there was a discussion, banks do not want everyone to see every transaction on a blockchain. But there may be certain points, certain levels that may or may not. So, in essence, you can control that. That's the point. And then the last one, it restructures the cost base. If we have a payment that we can make A to B without any intermediaries, it's a lot cheaper because you've not got all the intermediaries in between. Benefits, innovation and in new industries. I'll give you an example on that. Financial inclusion, the network grows, it scales, um, improve liquidity because you've got more currency flowing. Optimizes the value chain so you can pay up and down the value chain, the supply chain very quickly. And then obviously insight and risk management. Um, everything's tracked, so therefore you can get better analysis and information. Let's give you an example. So. Everybody knows the gig economy. Um, we all know we've been talking about this for a while. This is a massive you know, industry, so $455 billion, and I'm sure there's other estimates that are just as big. There's three reasons why this economy is still growing fairly slowly. Um, centralized digital platforms, uh, complexity of huge payments. So imagine your Uber payments when you use a taxi. You know, there's so many small transactions, and there's, there's millions of them. And then to, to grow these, there's a lot of capital. If you use a CBDC, you will be able to fast track a lot of this and make it quicker and easier. Three examples. Um, if you're a dancer, I'm not going to dance, so don't worry. Um, <laughs> but if you're a dancer, or you, know, you do some content on TikTok or whichever sort of uh, platform, it's very hard to get money, you know, but you would easily give 0.01p for somebody that was dancing on one of those funny videos because, you know, it's not going to cost you much, but you're not going to give a euro. You could do fractional payments. So with a CBDC, you could just press the button and give 0.01p, which for the person could amount to tens, hundreds of dollars a day, which in, you know, developing parts of the world could be a massive, massive difference. Second one, <laughs> has anybody waited? So you get payment for something they've sold. We all have, we have to wait. If you set it up with an atomic payment, once the goods arrive, the payment goes through straight away and it can be very quickly. The other side of that is that I've done the service and I didn't get paid, so the money's being held. So again, you can easily hold it or let, it, let the money go whenever you need to as quickly as possible. So just a few quick examples of how you could do that in, in, you know, with a CBDC. And then finally, just to bring you back to reality, this is real. Um, we're working with a number of central banks. These are the two that we um, have announced. Royal Monetary Authority of Bhutan, that's a full CBDC. So they're a sovereign nation, and that's issuing and using their currency, and that's sort of very, very much in progress. And then finally, Palau, which is going to be a government-backed stablecoin, a US dollar stablecoin, but it's backed by the Palau, uh, the Palau government. And the money will be held one for one. So it's a regulated stablecoin, um, and one of the first that will come out. Okay, so thank you very much for that, and um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the day.